The Marvel Cinematic Universe is jam-packed with some of pop culture's most iconic superheroes. As a result, we've seen countless acts of heroism since the franchise's inception back in 2008. But not all of them are what you'd necessarily describe as selfless, or as Captain America might put it. There have been lots of selfless acts of heroism as well, however, and they're the ones that we're going to be focusing on in this video. Here are the 15 best examples of selfless heroism in the MCU. In his debut 2011 movie, after his coronation ceremony was interrupted by the Frost Giants attempting to infiltrate Odin's trophy room, Thor waged war on the realm of Jotunheim, bringing an end to a long-standing peace agreement that his father had worked hard to put into action. It angered the Allfather, prompting him to relieve Thor of Mjolnir and his powers and banish him to Earth as a mere mortal. This put Loki's grand plan into practice. He sent the destroyer armor to Earth, where it began making a mess of the small New Mexico town Thor had found himself in. Then Thor stepped in and offered his own life so Loki would take the destroyer back to Asgard before anyone else got hurt. And Loki took the offer up. He struck the powerless Thor with his armor, mortally wounding him. But the heroic deed rendered Thor worthy of Mjolnir again, which swiftly returned to him, healed him back to full health, and gave him his powers back. At the end of 2011's Captain America The First Avenger, the titular superhero discovered that the Red Skull was planning to use weapons of mass destruction on a number of major American cities. As the Nazi supervillain took to the skies in his Valkyrie aircraft, Cap climbed aboard with the intention of preventing him from dropping those massively powerful bombs. In the absence of any method of safely landing the plane without detonating the weapons on board, Cap opted to sacrifice his own life by crash landing it in the middle of the Arctic Ocean. He was prepared to die, and miss out on a date, a dance, and a potential lifetime of happiness with Peggy Carter, to ensure the safety of millions of people he'd never even met. That's selflessness right there. 2012's The Avengers saw Loki launching an assault on Earth with the extraterrestrial army known as the Chitauri as his henchmen. But the World Security Council grew impatient with the time it was taking to end the invasion, so they launched a nuclear missile towards Midtown Manhattan, much to Nick Fury's dismay. Knowing it would kill anyone within a radius of several miles, Fury sent out a call for help and Tony Stark took action. Stark intercepted the missile and took it into the wormhole through which the Chitauri came and let go of it, directing it towards the alien's mothership. The missile detonated, destroying said mothership and disabling their forces on Earth. But it came at the cost of all power in Stark's suit, and he fell unconscious and descended back through the wormhole at some speed just as Romanoff closed it. Ultimately, the Hulk caught him and saved his life before he hit the ground, but Stark did it without knowing whether or not he would make it back alive. In 2014's Guardians of the Galaxy movie, when the titular team, the Ravagers and the Nova Corps joined forces to fight Ronin and his allies in the skies above Xandar, Rocket crashed a Ravager ship through Ronin's ship, the Dark Aster, causing it to crash land. It looked like the Guardians' fate was all but sealed, until Groot did something very selfless indeed. The tree-like character extended his branch-like appendages around his friends and teammates and protected them from the impact of the crash. His heroic act cost him his own life, but it saved the lives of the other Guardians. And he definitely knew what was going to happen. Rocket even told him so. Of course, Rocket was able to salvage a cutting from Groot's body from the wreckage of the crash, which allowed him to grow a new version of the character. And we've since seen Sapling Groot at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy, Baby Groot in 2017's Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2, and Teenage Groot, who appeared in Vol. 2's credits along with the two most recent Avengers movies. At the end of Guardians of the Galaxy, Ronan was on the verge of using the Power Stone to destroy Xandar when Peter Quill distracted him by challenging him to a dance-off. What are you doing? Dance-off, bro! It allowed Rocket the time to prepare the device that would detach the stone from Ronan's weapon and thus relieve him of the powerful item. At that point, Quill was able to grab it, but its power was too much for him to handle alone, even though it was later revealed that he was half human and half celestial. With the stone's power taking its toll on Quill's body and on the verge of killing him, Gamora offered him her hand, which he grabbed, subsequently splitting the stone's power between the two of them. Then Drax walked over and touched Quill on the shoulder, taking one third of the stone's power from him and Gamora. And finally, Rocket grabbed one of Drax's fingers, meaning the quartet of surviving guardians were sharing the brunt of the stone's power between them. All four of them knew it might kill them, but as a unit, they were able to control the Power Stone and use it to destroy Ronin with a powerful energy blast. 
As the mid credit scene of 2014's Captain America The Winter Soldier revealed, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver were created by Hydra's experiments with the Mind Stone in the MCU, and the duo began 2015's Avengers Age of Ultron as enemies of the Avengers, even siding with the titular villain. But it wasn't long before they realized the superhero team were the good guys and that Ultron wasn't the righteous robot they were initially led to believe he was. The two Maximoff siblings fought alongside the Avengers in the epic Battle of Sokovia, taking out countless Ultron drones in the process. When Hawkeye and a young Sokovian boy called Costell looked doomed as Ultron was firing bullets at them from the Avengers' Quinjet, the Superspeed Maximoff twin ran in front of them and took the bullets himself. He died there and then, redeeming himself for ever siding with Hydra and Ultron, but causing his twin sister unimaginable pain. He was avenged when Wanda killed Ultron's prime body, and honored for his selfless sacrifice when Clint Barton and his family decided to name their newest son Nathaniel Pietro Barton. In 2015's Ant-Man movie, it was revealed that the first Wasp, Janet Van Dyne, had been lost to the Quantum Realm since 1987, when she went subatomic in order to disarm a Soviet missile. Your mom died a hero. She saved millions of lives, which was obviously an incredibly selfless act in itself. But given that nobody had ever gone subatomic before, she must have at least hoped she'd be able to find her way back. Fast forward almost 30 years and Darren Cross, the villain known as Yellowjacket, had taken Cassie Lang hostage, goading Scott Lang, the Ant-Man, into a fight with him. To bring the fight to an end and save his daughter, Lang shrunk to subatomic size to penetrate Cross's suit and sabotage it to shrink uncontrollably, killing Cross, but knowingly dooming himself to a life in the quantum realm. Of course, when he got there, he realized he had the means to escape, a Pym particle disc, which brought him back to normal size. But the fact is, having known that Janet Van Dyne had been missing for 30 years since she went subatomic, Lang was still prepared to accept the same happening to him if it meant defeating Darren Cross and saving his daughter. 2016's Doctor Strange movie ended with Dormammu on the verge of merging his dark dimension with Earth, which would have seen the planet becoming something of a hell dimension had the merger come to fruition. But the titular heroic sorcerer wasn't prepared to stand for that, and he took action accordingly. He told Dormammu that he'd come to bargain for the safety of Earth, only for the powerful cosmic entity to kill him on the spot. But Strange had a plan which ensured that wasn't the end of him. As it turned out, he'd use the Time Stone to create an endless time loop, which would see him revived every time he was killed and attempt to bargain with Dormammu again. Unfamiliar with the concept of time, this eventually frustrated Dormammu into submission, but not before Strange had been killed more times than anyone would ever care to count. Essentially, Strange was prepared to die over and over again in a variety of extremely painful ways to ensure Earth's safety. That's about as selfless as anyone can be. At the end of 2017's Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2, the titular team, along with Yondu Udanta, faced off against Ego on his self-made planet. With Ego coming out on top in the battle, Yondu inspired Peter Quill to fight back against his father, which turned the fight in the good guy's favor. Groot triggered a bomb that Rocket had designed to go off in Ego's core, which they hoped would kill him. And when the Guardians were evacuating to escape the effects of the bomb, Yondu decided to stay so he could save Quill as he believed he had done nothing else right in his life. Rocket gave him the last spacesuit and flight suit that were available to the group, and Groot then welcomed Yondu into the Guardians of the Galaxy in what was a very heartwarming moment. As Ego exploded, Yondu, using the flight suit, rescued Star-Lord from the destruction and flew him to safety in space. Unfortunately, with there only being one spacesuit left, Udanta had a seemingly very difficult choice to make, but he didn't think twice. He gave the suit to Quill and saved his life, sacrificing his own by succumbing to the vacuum of space. At the end of 2017's Spider-Man Homecoming, Peter Parker was enjoying his homecoming dance when he came to the realization that Adrian Toomes, the Vulture, was planning to hijack a Department of Damage Control plane that was transporting weapons from the old Avengers Tower to the team's new headquarters in upstate New York. Without worrying about himself or his relationship with Liz Toomes, he left the dance and raced to Toomes' lair, where he defeated Shocker and fought with Vulture. He ended up trapped underneath the building after Vulture collapsed it, but he wasn't done. He managed to hitch a ride on Vulture as he intercepted the plane and found himself hanging on to the outside of it while it was flying high in the sky. That's a pretty bold move, but he went one further by causing it to crash land on the beach near Coney Island while he was still on board, risking his life to prevent the villain from winning. Moreover, even after another fight with Vulture on the beach, he still proceeded to selflessly save the villain's life after his suit exploded. It was this scenario that cemented Spider-Man as an Avengers-worthy hero. And rightfully so, even if he didn't take up Tony Stark's offer to join the team in the end. 
In 2018's Avengers Infinity War, after a humiliating beating at the hands of Thanos in the movie's opening scenes, Thor went on a mission to obtain a weapon capable of killing the Mad Titan. When he got there, however, he found that Nita Velir's forges, which were usually brightly lit and teeming with activity, were cold and barren. As it turned out, Thanos had got there before him, forced Atri to make the Infinity Gauntlet for him, killed all the other dwarves, and shut the forge down. But Thor wasn't having that, so he took it upon himself to restart the forge. Using his own body as a conduit and knowing it might kill him, he took the full force of a star to restart the forge. It left his body limp and lifeless, but Stormbreaker was successfully created and brought him back to life. Of course, even though he managed to ram the weapon into Thanos' chest, it didn't ultimately help to prevent the Mad Titan from snapping his fingers and executing the decimation, but the good and selfless intention was there when he made the weapon. Avengers Infinity War saw Thanos having collected the Power Stone, the Space Stone, the Reality Stone, the Soul Stone, and the Time Stone, in that order, before he arrived on Earth for the final confrontation with the MCU's heroes in Wakanda. At that point, all he needed to complete his collection and execute the snap was the Mind Stone, which unfortunately was firmly embedded in Vision's vibranium forehead. In the absence of an easy and safe method of removing it, and in spite of Shuri's desperate attempts to help him do so, Vision came to the decision that destroying the stone was the only option he had to save the universe. He demanded that Wanda Maximoff, the woman he loved, used her power to bombard it with energy until it was smashed into a thousand pieces. And that's exactly what she did, while holding Thanos back at the same time. And Vision died, sacrificing himself for the greater good. The fact that Thanos had other plans and turned back time to fix the stone before tearing it from Vision's head to kill him once again doesn't change the selfless act the android had just committed. It's just a shame it was all for nothing in the end. Avengers Infinity War showed us what was required to obtain the Soul Stone, that being the sacrifice of a loved one no less. In that movie, the sacrifice came in the form of Gamora, as Thanos threw his adoptive daughter to her death from a clifftop on the barren planet Vormir. So in 2019's Avengers Endgame, when the Avengers planned their mission to go back in time and collect the Infinity Stones from the past, we knew exactly what was coming. Conveniently, as far as the wider plot was concerned, the pair of heroes who were sent to Vormir to collect the Soul Stone were Natasha Romanoff and Clint Barton. Two characters whose long-standing friendship was such a close one that they did indeed love each other. When they arrived on the planet and met the Red Skull, they were informed that if they wanted the Soul Stone, only one of them could make it back to Earth in 2023 alive. Both characters were prepared to die for the greater good. In fact, they fought over it. But Romanoff won and threw herself over the edge of the cliff, killing herself so the Avengers had all the required tools to undo the snap. Avengers Endgame saw the titular heroes fighting back against Thanos, attempting to undo the devastating actions he carried out in Avengers Infinity War. In their attempts to do so, they traveled back to various points in history to collect all six Infinity Stones, with their intention being to use them to bring every victim of the Decimation back into existence. They had the unenviable task of choosing someone to execute a reverse snap, whereby they'd wear a completed version of the Infinity Gauntlet and snap their fingers to resurrect everyone. Thor wanted to do it to make amends for failing to kill Thanos with Stormbreaker in Wakanda. But it was quickly and unanimously decided that he wasn't in the right physical or emotional state, so Bruce Banner put himself forward. He was permanently in the body of the Hulk at that point, and given that the main radiation given off by the stone was gamma, he believed he could survive using them. However, it was still a major risk, so volunteering to carry it out was certainly selfless. Yeah. He successfully executed the reverse snap, and although he didn't end up dying, it did cost him the use of his right arm. Unfortunately for the MCU's heroes, while they were busy executing the reverse snap, 2014 Nebula was also busy bringing 2014 Thanos to 2023. After the Mad Titan saw off the triple threat challenge of Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor, he brought his entire legion of henchmen and resources to Earth and set about destroying the planet. But virtually every hero ever seen in the franchise, including those who had just been resurrected by Bruce Banner's reverse snap, suddenly appeared through a plethora of portals, and the Battle of Earth commenced. As the battle was raging, Tony Stark ended up in possession of the Infinity Gauntlet and all six Infinity Stones. And after a quick glimpse to Doctor Strange confirmed this was the one scenario in which the heroes came out on top, he snapped his fingers to turn Thanos and his army to dust. He'd saved the world, and indeed the universe, from the Mad Titan. But it came at the most devastating cost. Our favorite hero, the iconic Iron Man, succumbed to the power of the Infinity Stones. He sacrificed his own life to save everyone else's. Tears were shed in movie theaters around the world, and it was undoubtedly the most selfless act of heroism the MCU is ever likely to see. I am Iron Man.
Can you think of any heroic acts that were more selfless than these ones in the MCU? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Screen Rant for more great videos like this one. See you again soon, guys.